what I think you don't realize is, is when I was a young boy, uh, I was fascinated with magic, you know, sleight of hand, card tricks, you know, coin tricks and things like that. And David Copperfield was a huge inspiration to me. And I can't wait until February because he's supposed to be making the moon disappear, which is going to be equivalent to what he did with the Statue of Liberty, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just perception. But that first moment of watching his annual magic pre uh, presentation on uh, CBS was like a, a, a huge milestone each year for me because I wanted to be like him. Like I wanted to be up there and dazzle the people that would watch him because when he would do something, that line between reality and wow, what is going on here? Like this is something that shouldn't be possible. I loved that moment, that moment of astonishment. And over the years, I you know, invested money in, in learning and, and time and studying you know, that craft of, of magic. And I got really good at it. And then one of the guys I learned from, his name is Paul Harris. Now, if you looked at this guy, you would not be impressed with him at all. He doesn't have any kind of uh, you know, features that would say, wow, he's charming, or that he is really just an average looking guy, okay? Slightly balding, a poorly maintained mustache, and just nothing really to look at, but sharp as a tack. And his style, I kind of took that as a guru online. And what do I mean by that? His strategy was many times to, to entertain himself, really. And if you, you could probably find his interview, maybe, maybe not. I'm, I, if I can find it, I'll, I'll share a link on Twitter before I go. But um, for some of you, this is probably means nothing to you. But I want you to understand who I am, where all this stuff came from, what created this personality that I presented to all of you, and the building block that created it, because it's not me copying somebody else's trading style. It's me as a young boy growing up and having all of my influences become a part of what you're seeing. Like you remember the 80s cartoon Voltron? Loved it. I, mean, I loved it. Before school, I'd watch it. And you had these, these tigers that would come together and it would you know, make this Megazord, right? And there he is. Boom. Well, all of these people like Paul Harris, Jeff McBride, Larry Williams, um, martial arts instructors, you know, all these influences over the course of my life all had little parts and roles to play to be who I am. And the, the arrogance aspect that many of you don't like about me, uh, that's really not me. And I've, I've told you very candidly when I was younger, that was a genuine thing about me because I was new money and new money just acts like new money. <laughs> and it's an ugly thing. But I got humbled, and it might not sound like I'm humbled, but I use this as a means of engaging the audience. And what did Paul Harris do as a magician? He would win the crowd over with his talent and his cordialness, his, his politeness. And then he would flip it up and become this jerk, this, this person that really nobody would want to listen to. And then he would try to win them back over. As much as that may sound like, what, why would you want to do that? It made sense to me. That made sense to me. Because who do you really want to be paying attention to? You want to see the guy that was taunting everybody to get knocked out. You ever see that, that MMA video? The fighter, he's out there. He's, you know, he's doing all these you know, breakdancing moves. And all of a sudden, boom, sleep bill. Well, that, that's what everybody wants to see. So if I'm not going to market myself and pay for advertising, and I already hook the people that already see value in what I'm teaching, how do I get the rest of the people? I got to create some kind of stickiness. So I'm going to be that arrogant clown that represents himself with a demo because everybody wants to see that guy get wrecked. So they'll talk, and they'll talk, and they'll talk to their friends, and they say, go look at this guy here, look at this. Yeah, wonderful. And they all advertised for me for free. You all worked for me for me for free doing all those things. You allowed all these well-rounded students that I have now to find me, and I never had to put a dime behind any of it. Everything was scheduled. The real me, the real me, that's who's talking to you right now. 
I have gone through the ringer through these markets in life with a woman that was really not wanting to be with me, but wanted the money I had. And I had to do a lot of things to hide from her and her ex-husband now. And it's unfortunate, but you know, I own that. It's, it's something I, I made the mistake of doing something as a young man and I own it. But some of you want to have this, this position of notoriety and you want it to fill a void. You want it to fill some kind of vacuum space that your own life can't fill. And you're thinking that if you become popular in trading or if you start teaching or if you're giving out signals and such, and I hope all of you are successful at it. I genuinely, absolutely, wholeheartedly want all of you, even the people that take shots at me, you know, trolls and whatnot, I want all of you to succeed. I've had a lot of fun being an inner circle trader. I've had so much fun. And some of you have taken it personal, but I've never meant anything personal. It's always been shop talk. That's all it is. I can take a good ribbing. Look at how I go back and forth with Patrick Whelan. I don't see him as a threat, and I know he doesn't see me as a threat. But it's all online banter. It's fun. But I hope that the skill set that you acquired from me and learning how to do this doesn't turn you into what I was as a 20-year-old, which was an arrogant so-and-so. And there was days where I didn't even have the ability to tolerate myself. I would say or think certain things and think to myself, wow, <laughs> that's horrible. You know, where'd that come from? Well, I, I know now where it came from, but you know, I, I try to keep myself from that kind of stuff as much as I can. And I, in, admittedly, when I'm on social media, especially Twitter, um, I have a tendency to want to revert back to how I was as a 20-year-old, which is, in my opinion, going backwards. You know, it's devolving. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go backwards. And while I can have fun in a, you know, a playful manner with certain individuals, it, sometimes context is lost. Sometimes uh, sarcasm is lost in the in the delivery of a of a tweet or something I may have said in a tongue-in-cheek remark. And sometimes language is an issue. Because some of you may not understand a obvious glaring sarcasm that would be understood from the United States perspective. And then for someone of foreign persuasion may hear me say something and there's a disconnect or it may come across as arrogance when really arrogance wasn't even the, the delivery at the time. But th that whole side of me was instrumented and originated from Paul Harris, who was a magician that really didn't become a big thing, but a lot of his effects and, and, and slights and stuff that I learned, uh, his style made sense to me because what was I? You know, I was a young man and I wanted to be able to fool the guys that were acting like they were the ones that should be paid the most attention to in the room. So do you remember the discussion I had uh, a couple years ago? I said that uh, you want to see who in the room's the loudest and you want to be the one they don't see coming. I always sit in the room with the corner behind me because I want to have the lay of the land. I want to see who's out there. Who are the, who's the one that's going to probably be a problem for me tonight if there's going to be alcohol in the room? I want to size them up, find their weaknesses, see what they think their strengths are, and it, who's their friends in the room. I've lived my life that way. I, mean, I grew up in a neighborhood that, you know, I couldn't run. I didn't have the stamina to run, so I had to learn how to fight. So my mindset has always been I have to be prepared for anything that's adversarial. And that's why my perspective on the marketplace is always that of like war or an action movie, something to that effect. And it also serves a very good purpose for the young men because that's how they think too. Rambo, Chuck Norris, you know, um, you name it, you know, whoever you want to put in that, that action film role. So it, it kind of allows that human mind to be blurring the line of, 
okay, yeah, I'm learning something very, very dry, very, very technical, very, very boring in the beginning. But if it can be laced with, hey, you, know, you do this, you're going to be a Chuck Norris. You're going to be, you know, a Bruce Lee. You know, gonna, you're going to be some kind of commando GI Joe that can pull off something nobody else can do. And young men, like I was, you know, we let our minds drift to those things. And women, it's always been a hard sell for them. And that's why in the beginning, I didn't have a whole lot of women that were students. The one that comes to mind is Oki Dame. I'm not even sure if she's still around or not. But uh, she was on Baby Pips. You know, it's one of my core students in the beginning. But I'm, I'm not sure what she's even doing anymore today, if she's even trading. If you're listening, I hope you're well. But um, yeah, I'm talking about online, online students, because I obviously had women as students prior to being on Baby Pips. But all these, you know, these stepping stones of becoming a, a, a human being that has been influenced by other people, not necessarily traders, not necessarily, you know, good role models. I used all of that to create this online persona as of inner circle trader, just like wrestling. You know, um, when you hear me, when you hear me rant, what you're hearing is how I used to practice when I was working out and was a larger guy, 18 years old. I wanted to be a wrestler. I mean, I have yearbooks that you can see all my friends were like, you know, don't wrestle this one. Or, you know, they all knew I, that was my aspiration. I wanted to be a wrestler. And I would practice doing shoots and promos. Like I could do, I could do verbatim just about every Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan promo that you can pretty much get almost everything that they're saying. I'll, I'll say it just verbatim. Just like that, down to the flicking of his sunglasses and flicking it away, <laughs> all of that. Even the one where he did the, the promo with Mean Gene Oakland where he had the, the, the creamers, the coffee creamers, the cream of the crop. I practiced that so many times when I was in high school because I knew what? Nobody cares about the wrestling. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that stuff. If you've ever been to a live wrestling event, it's actually boring. But when you watch on TV, they add additional sound of the audience cheering. That's fake. And you're hearing that commentary. What's the commentary? It's to make you like. It's to influence your in interest. Oh, look at this. Because they know that you have a team mentality. So as a influencer, I already knew that there's a lot of people out here in this industry that are getting credit for things that don't really deserve it because they're not doing anything. They don't even prove they can trade. They can't even show you an execution from beginning to end. Not just once, but they're the most opinionated people. So I wanted to come out and have a very polarizing, very polarizing perspective placed on me. And Tom Hugard is, uh, <laughs> he, he's been public about how, you know, you ever hear this guy, uh, Inner Circle? <laughs> he never puts the trader at the end of it. I think it's a, it's a subliminal knock against me because he thinks I'm just a demo trader. <laughs> I, I don't think that. I'm just being funny now. But he, he said that, uh, you know, this guy, he's, he's, very, he's very polarizing. He's like Moses. And I didn't take that as I'm trying to be Moses or that I'm equivalent to Moses. But he nailed it because that's exactly what I have tried to do. So that way it creates discussion. There's going to be people that have learned from me, that have real tangible experience that they can say, this works in my hands. I know it works. I have proof of it. I don't need to see ICT do it, but yet ICT does it every single week. So what is that doing? It's canceling the people that's going to say, but you never see him do what? Trade with a live count? You saw that. Call the high and low of the week? You saw that. Trade the high and low of the day? Trade low, short, and then go long the same day? Trade without a bias, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, on every single turning point. Yeah, you have all saw all that. But that won't matter because just like when you go to watch a wrestling match, without all the fanfare around it, without the influencing and commentary, the team aspect of being in the crowd, you're a John Cena fan. Oh, you're an Undertaker fan, you know, that type of thing. It doesn't make it fun unless you have that interaction. So I had to create this polarizing personality that many times 
I was shocked at where, like, I don't, I don't have a script. Okay. Unless I'm weaving the paper, like when I'm talking about something that is an itinerary that I have to get through. And it was usually the very long, long, long Twitter spaces. But right now I have nothing. I'm talking with my hands right now if you're watching me. I was shocked at where, where this stuff comes from. And it, that wit comes from practicing being like all of the wrestlers that I looked up to as a child, even the ones that I didn't like, like Ric Flair. I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand He used to make me cry as a kid because he would, he would pin all of my favorites by pulling their trunks and putting, their leg, putting his legs up on the ropes. And it would make me angry. And I would leave the house with the chip on my shoulder and go talk to my friends about something. And because I'm angry about that, I would start an argument with them just because I wanted to vent. So I was thinking to myself, I'm not the only one that thinks like this. This is human nature. Like This is human nature. So if I can create this opportunity for people to talk about me and what I'm doing and how I'm basically trying to ridicule everything else in the industry, what's that going to do? It's going to create waves. And it's going, to, it's going to be out there, and people are going to hear about it. And somebody's going to want to come over here and say, hey, let's, let's, let's just square this up right now. This is what I can do. This is what you said you can do. And largely, it's been just exactly what I said. They'll talk, and you're going to hear all these new people talk, but I want you to remember, let them prove it matters not to me, and I'm the guy that's done more than anybody else out there. It doesn't matter if they show it to you with a demo account. Because if they have conceptual ideas that they believe are viable in price delivery, because that's what I focused on, price delivery. If they can do what they claim, they will gladly show you from beginning to end with a stop loss and walk it just like that. And not just one time. Every single week, consistently, show you what they teach, what they claim to know. Can they do it in their own hands? Because there's going to be a lot of people with my logo, with my name, saying they trained with me, saying they're a charter member. That's been the biggest scam. So many people have claimed to be charter members. And honestly, folks, the easiest litmus test is simply ask them to prove that they can do what they say they know how to do. And as soon as they say no or give you excuses why they don't want to do it, there's your answer. That's it. You don't have to troll them. You don't have to go on and on about them. Just, okay, I saved myself a lot of time. Don't even wish them well. Just wipe your feet off at the doormat and just leave them right where they stand. There's going to be a lot of fraud and scam and all this other stuff once I stop producing content. Because there's going to be a lot of you that just want to be around it still. You don't need to be around it anymore. You have everything in your hands right now. I don't care if you go watch any more of my videos. I don't care. If I cared, I have the biggest audience right now, making over thirty-some thousand dollars a month in ad revenue, and I don't even put new videos up. I'm telling you, I'm not putting new videos up. So how does that even fit the criteria that people were going to try to say that I want you to watch videos for ad revenue? Because I could just easily put something up every day. I could talk about a review that's already happened. And make lots of money doing that. I want to go back to my personal life. I want to have the latter chapters in my life with my wife. And I just want to tell you something real quick. Before I came downstairs here, while I was using my, my wife's little, I got to find out what this thing's called. I bought her this uh, cappuccino machine thing. And she has this like little I don't know what it is. It's got like a little ring, but it's like a coil. And she puts it in her coffee to kind of like froth it up or whatnot. I guess, it's, I guess it would be like a frother. If it's not a frother, then you, you, for those who understand what I'm talking about, you probably know what that name is. You just, I guess tweet it to me because it's driving me nuts right now. But I used it to stir up my, my cocoa. And as I was doing it, she leaned over my shoulder and she kissed me on the cheek. She goes, finish it today so that way I can have my husband. And for the folks that honestly think that I'm going to be on Twitter after today, I'm telling you, we're done. We're done. I want this woman to be happy with me. And tomorrow's not promised to me or her. 
And I want to be able to say that you're worth it to me to put all this down. 